We are less than three weeks away from the start of a new school year in Southwest Florida, but for some kids, getting to class is the least of their worries. More than 3,000 students were identified as homeless last year by the school district in Lee County. That's three times more than just a few years ago. NBC2 investigator Evan Dean exposes the need and how to fix it. I do not deserve a lot of, like, what happened to me. 18-year-old Joseph Gerbazio has moved from place to place, person to person, his entire life. He can't stay with his mom, and his dad has been in and out of jail for selling drugs. There have been a lot of moments where I, like, felt like I had um, no support system. He has found that here, at Rob's Cottage, where he's stayed since the start of the year. It's part of Youth Haven in Naples, a shelter for abused, neglected, or homeless children. We are their family. We're here to support them through their, their entire life. CEO Linda Goldfield says Rob's Cottage is for teens who've chosen to live here. Right now, it's at capacity. There's a waiting list for this cottage in the first time in its history. Over at the Campbell Lodge, another shelter in Naples, a wait list has become the norm. You know, it's, it's a growing issue, and, and we're trying to grow with it in our support. So Zachary Miller works for St. Matthew's House, which runs the lodge. They also house homeless children, those who are with a parent. Here, they have rooms for families, like Adriana Riley and her 10-year-old daughter. Here, I feel like I'm becoming a better mom for my kid. Adriana was evicted earlier this year after struggling with an addiction. She's now getting the help she needs for herself and her daughter. She shouldn't have to worry about anything. She should be worry-free. She should be playing and happy. A kid. Yeah, she should be a kid. But the number of kids, students, considered homeless is on the rise in Collier. You could see a big increase during the 2022-23 school year. And in Lee County, a huge spike that same year. Numbers did drop a bit this past school year, but are still way up from before. Housing is a crisis situation for our families. Erin Dallacosta is the homeless liaison for the district in Lee. Students are considered homeless for several situations. Some are living on the streets, in parks or cars or tents. Others are in shelters, in shared housing or in motels. Long term, none of those options are good ones. If your basic needs are not being met, then how can you learn effectively? Della Costa says better reporting is part of the reason for the increase, but she also blames Hurricane Ian and crippling housing costs. The solution is um, providing more affordable housing to families. It's housing, it's finances, it's health, it's everything. But really, uh, what you know, in order to to reach all of those goals and and to you know check all of those boxes, uh, you have to have support. So. St. Matthew's House is taking support they've gotten and are building a new women and children shelter in Fort Myers. It's set to open by the fall to help the growing need. I think our response to that is saying, how can we be bigger? Uh, how can we provide more services to more people? Youth Haven is also looking to expand to offer transitional housing to teens who can no longer stay on campus. They deserve every opportunity that all of the children in this community deserve. It's something Joseph Gerbazio has now realized. He's proof these programs do work. He just graduated from high school and plans to attend Florida State in the fall. Despite his past, despite all he's been through, his future is bright. I don't necessarily like believe things are going to just magically get better one day but i do believe that i can sort of just seize the day and make things better if a parent or child you know is homeless and needs help or to support the organizations we just featured we have links to resources inside the nbc2 news app for the nbc2 investigators i'm evan dean